Burying the investigation into Troopergate has vaulted to the top of the McCain-Palin campaign's to-do list. Now the Alaska legislature may consider pushing back their inquiry until after November. I wonder why they chose that month. More in a minute. First, though, it's time for a couple of underreported holy mackerel stories in today's news. And in the case of this first story, I mean severely underreported. The economic crisis has turned the national page on Hurricane Ike far too soon. In Houston, America's fourth largest city, folks are still having problems with food and water distribution, with lines of residents stretching several blocks waiting for supplies. Houston is also being forced to ration health care as the city with the nation's largest population of uninsured and underinsured Americans. Emergency rooms are overwhelmed with patients. Many Texans in Ike's wake are still without electricity. Over in devastated Galveston, city officials are fighting with each other about the number of residents who may return home. Even though medical experts deem conditions in Galveston a health hazard, the mayor says the city is in third world country status with no hot water or flushing toilets on most of the island. Galveston's only hospital says it is now not capable of treating serious illnesses or major trauma. Heck of a job, huh? Some side effects of Ike are being felt in other parts of the country as well. After the hurricane knocked out 20% of the nation's refining capacity, there are reported gasoline shortages throughout the southeast and mid-Atlantic states. Hardest hit, most likely to run dry, are stations not affiliated with big petroleum brands. They say they can't afford the wholesale prices of the limited supplies that are available. USA Today reports that in the state of Virginia, for example, about 15% of gas stations, 1515, have no gas. Twelve refineries are still shut down along the Gulf. Most refining capacity may not be restored for another 10 days. And finally, a little good news. The new I-35W bridge in Minneapolis has just opened. It was completed three months early and under budget. It was just over a year ago that the busy 40-year-old I-35W bridge tragically collapsed. Construction crews working on the new bridge worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week to get the job done. The new bridge is built of concrete instead of steel. It contains hundreds of sensors that will collect data, hopefully detecting small problems before they become big ones, with other sensors activating an anti-icing system when necessary, as well as a series of cameras that should feed data on traffic flow. It's a smart bridge. The federal secretary of transportation speaking at the bridge opening said, quote, it shouldn't take a tragedy to build a bridge this fast in America. Amen. And might I add, it shouldn't take a tragedy to get politicians to stop defaming bridge building and the rest of our infrastructure as evil pork.